Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the uh, 16th of January, 2013. Yeah, hi. Yeah, this is another one. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Perfect. Oh, how many of these have you done? That's Leah Jensen. <laughs> Leah, welcome, and that's her, that's her daughter there. This is the youngest, Lucia. <laughs> oh, that's, there might be more. Yes. I'm not sure how many I have. No, I have three. <laughs> hi, Lucia. How are you? She says hi. Lucia, hey, hi where, Lucia, where do you live? Can you say hi? Put the earphone in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi. So, hi, Paul Allison. Hi, how are you? Um, and your mom works in the Oakland School District, right? Do you know that? Okay, so I'm going to listen yeah. now, okay, baby? <laughs> and I work in, in the Bronx, in, right, so in New York City. And we have three folks here from... We have three folks... Ooh, we, yeah, we don't want to have that on. We have three folks here from um, Guru, gurulearning.org. Or, I have that right? Yes, I do, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know what? Rather than me bumbling with the introductions, why don't uh, you all introduce yourselves? Um, I, Leah, yeah. you and I could uh, quickly tell the story that, oh, also, can you send the link? So let me try to get some other people. Hi, Chris Sloan. I didn't know. I thought your son had a basketball game tonight. No, they Wait. don't have one tonight, so. Does that mean they lost? I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, they just didn't have one scheduled. They're okay. <laughs> They're okay? Okay, good. Gail says, can you send the link? Um, but it's at EdTechTalk. Can you take care of that? I think she's in the chat sure. room. It's right there at the top of the Titan page. Okay. I hope. I think it is. It is, right. yeah. That's how Wait. I got here. Okay, good. Um, so why don't we... Th this is Chris Sloan, who helped me start Youth Voices 10 years ago um, or so. Yeah, maybe longer, somewhere, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're we're going to learn about Google. <laughs> sorry, GuruLearning.org. Sorry to be so all over the place here, guys, but we'll calm down in just a second. Leah, mm -hmm. do you want to do you want to tell us? Um, you were visiting New York City, and you told me about Guru. New York um, City. And it really got me excited. And uh, now we're we're uh, doing a sort of coastal kind of conversation here about what the possibilities are. Um, yeah. you quickly introduce yourself and say why you were in New York and... Okay. My name is Leah <laughs> Jensen and um, I'm Instructional Technology in Oakland Unified School District, um, specifically on the literacy team, so working with them on the rollout of the Common Core. And um, I work um, I had this great opportunity, have this great opportunity to work on a project um, called the Edu Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age. And um, we received a grant from Bechtel, um, and our partners are the National Writing Project, Mills College, and Mills College. And um, so I met Paul O, who's part of the National Writing Project. And um, anyway, so part of that work. Um, and also learning, I know this is like a lot, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible, but learning a lot about connected learning, um, which is a concept from the MacArthur Foundation, and I learned a lot about that from Paul and Elise, um, and, who's a colleague of Paul's, and, um, and so I wanted to learn more about these principles of connected learning, and uh, and so um, I know that they're in action in New York. And so I asked Elise and Paul, um, you know, who should I visit in New York? And they immediately both said, yo, you got to see Paul Allison and Youth Voices. And so um, that's what brought me to meet Paul Allison. And then he and I visited some schools together before I got to see his classroom and a colleague of his classroom. And um, it was there. We were talking about learning platforms, et cetera. And I asked him if he knew about Guru. And um, I had just gotten in touch with Tim before I had left New York, so it was a tool that I was just exploring, and um, and that's the this is how we're all well how Paul and I are now <laughs> working together. So, Very did that cool. fit the bill, Paul? Yeah, that's a great uh, great great personal introduction there. Um, <laughs> Tim, why don't you introduce yourself and introduce your colleagues? Um, we'll go that way next. Sure. Well, great to be back on Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, I connected with Paul um, 
at just at the beginning of the new year and, and sat in uh, with about four others for uh, just a, a really lively chat. Um, and I think many were away and, and enjoying rest and recovery. And um, it, it was just great to to hear others working and this kind of concept of connected learning throughout uh, throughout the country happening. I, I connected with Leah through our work in Chicago with uh, Chicago Public Schools. And Leah was at a conference and connected with uh, their director of instructional technology, John Melios. And um, I reached out to Leah just at the, the same time that John had introduced Guru to her. And it was kind of serendipitous timing. And uh, shortly after, um, we connected with Paul. Um, I'm with two colleagues. So my role at Guru is on the school support team, um, on our overall academic operations team, and learning about how teachers are using tech tools, um, what, what it is that they need support with to get over the hump, to, that, that so take the leap, so to speak, um, as Paul O had referenced uh, two weeks ago, about being familiar and comfortable to a point where they're using this on daily levels in their classes. And um, so we work to learn that and, and then build and design Guru as a way to respond to teachers', teachers actual needs and student, uh, student learning outcomes as a result, seeing how they're being measured by such a tool and such, uh, such learning uh, tools in the web in general. Um, I'm here with my colleague uh, Xenia, who works on our marketing and outreach team. And I'll let her introduce herself. And then Jody, uh, after that, will introduce herself and uh, share a little bit about uh, the projects that she's working on here at Guru as well. Super. Great. So hi Welcome. everyone. My name is Xenia. Um, as Tim mentioned, uh, I work with the community partners team, support team and uh, I coordinate outreach uh, to and also marketing with our uh, community of teachers and also all of our partners. Cool. Jody, we don't hear you yet. You must be signed. Muted. Ooh. So Jody. There, there. there you are. There you go, Jody. I'm back. I'm here. You're on. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um so I'm also uh, with him on the academic operations team. I was brought on specifically to work with uh, making collections more um, usable for students to sort of add, add some pedagogical narration to it. Um, and I've also been working with, with uh, Tim to bring Guru into schools to see how teachers are using it and to support them in learning the skills necessary to do what they do with it. Um, and additionally, I'm really working on work bringing, uh, helping Guru support project-based learning is a nut that we're trying to crack around here. So I've done some work around that in area schools, setting up uh, pilots to see how we can bring interactive learning and collecting data and collaboration um, to Guru. So what I'd love for you, and, and Monica Hardy is here. Welcome, Monica. Thank you for dropping in here. And um, Gail Desler is here from Northern California. Monica is in Loveland, Colorado. And Chris Sloan in... Um, in Salt Lake City, you guys are all in very beautiful places. So, <laughs> anyway. um, uh, and you guys, you the three of you know that you should just interrupt uh, whenever we go here. I want to get into some complicated use case um, issues around um, Guru and so forth eventually, but I'd I'd kind of love for uh, any of the three of you to give the kind of uh, two or three minute simple introduction. What's the lowest bar of entry kind of thing for describing what Guru is? Um, and then we'll get into the complicated, uh, you know, the uh, OER kind of big questions a little bit later. Does that sound like a fair way to start? Yeah, that's great. OK. So who wants to tackle that? I yeah. will. I will do my best to honor your request for a simple introduction to Guru, Paul. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So let's see if this works this time. Um, so let me know if I can just get a confirmation that you can see uh, Guru pulled up on my screen. Everyone shaking their head up and down. Yes. That's good. 
Perfect. All right. So this right here, and actually, let me go ahead and just reload it, um, is the landing page for Guru, which is uh, www.gurulearning.org. Um, and Guru is a search engine for learning, as you can see right up here. Um, so right now, it covers 5th through 12th grade math, science, history, and economics topics. And we are working on expanding to more grade levels and subjects as well. So uh, English language arts is one subject that we're working on and are very excited to roll out in the near future. So for the very basic um, introduction to Guru, I will just show you how to search on Guru. Um, so as a teacher, you can use Guru to search for free multimedia learning resources. Um, so we go right here to the search bar, and let's just say we're teaching about cells. Go ahead and do a quick search, and you'll see that we have eight different resource types. Videos, interactives, websites, exams, textbooks, handouts, lessons, and slides. So this little pop-up box that you saw right here, um, this comes up when you hover your mouse over a resource, and it just provides you with information. Uh, so you have the description. Here are the California science standards that this resource is aligned to. I can go to the original source. Uh, it looks like this video is from YouTube. So if I click here, this would take me to YouTube. And then if I clicked on this right here, this would take me to a collection that uses this resource. So who, who creates these resources? So these resources are all open education resources. So they are pulled from educational sites. For example, Khan Academy right here. Um, it looks like Get Body Smart, <coughs> excuse me, is another uh, resource provider that we have pulled these resources from. Uh huh. So people at Guru pull them together, or teachers do, or I'm, I'm just, uh, I mean, everybody does. But in general, sure. how have how have these gotten here so far? Um, all of the above. So we do look for educational resources. Um, we have an in-house team that's dedicated to finding the best resources on the web for our various topics that we cover. But also, um, something that I can show you in a little bit is that teachers can upload their own resources to Guru. Uh, so presumably, if you created a slide on cells, you could upload that, and then that would be searchable within Guru. So these are all individual resources here, and then I want to introduce you to the concept of collections, which is um, a collection is a playlist of resources. So if you click over here, that will actually do a search on any collections um, on cells. So below here, we have our search results. And uh, to the right, you can preview the resources that are within that collection. So each of these individual thumbnails is a resource and then these headings here in blue, for example, an, an overview of cells or first observation of cells, those are segments which are essentially like different chapters in a book um, is how I like to think of it. So not only can you play a collection, which I'll briefly show you right here. If you go to study, you'll see that there are different resources that are pulled together. You can skip through the collection, so you don't necessarily have to view the resources in a collection in order. Um, you can navigate below. What can, can I ask? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt the the wonderful presentation, but um, the, the the little um, pin thing up in the upper right hand corner of the slide. Yeah, what's that for? <laughs> this actually. <laughs> It's funny that you asked that because I just realized um, a couple months ago what this was. You can actually click on it and it'll pin your drawer open. So yeah. I don't think many people okay. use it. It's not extremely functional, but it's there in case you want to keep okay. your drawer open while you're studying. All right, fair enough. I just thought maybe it had some secret that I didn't get. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, so I'm going to take you all the way back to our, well, let's see if we can get back. Our search page um, because I want to show you this button right here. Um, you'll see this button throughout Guru. Um, which we call it our edit pencil. And if you click on it, what you can actually do with a collection um, is make a copy of it and then customize it for your class's needs. Um, so if I really liked this collection on discovering cells, but I decided, you know, here's a textbook resource, my students really don't respond well to textbook resources, I can just go ahead and get rid of all of those. Um, and then I can, in its place, add a resource of my own. So mm. um, I can add a video from YouTube or a different URL. I can add an interactive resource, which I can upload from my computer if I have my own, or I can um, upload a URL. So if it's interactive from 
for example, National Geographic website or so. Okay. Um, and also I can do the same for any of these. Another thing I can do is search for suggested resources. So since we're editing this collection on cells, I can go ahead and search and maybe I want this one. And that's searching Guru, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. That is okay. searching um, all the resources that we have in Guru. Resources. Mm -hmm. And then once I had entered all my information, for example, my title and description, I could just go ahead and click Save, and it would appear here. But we're not going to do that here. Um, and another thing I can do is rearrange my resources and also my segments. So it's very interactive, and you can basically use Guru um, to meet all of your students' needs. You know, if there are certain types of resources you know they respond better to, definitely include a lot of those, upload those into the collection, mm -hmm. um, and customize the collection however you see best fit for your class. Um, the other thing is that you can actually create your own collections from scratch. I don't know if that would be going over the uh, simple introduction to Guru, but I'm happy to answer questions about that later on if necessary. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's yeah, let's take some uh, conversation around what you've said so far, and then we'll see what happens. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is the student. I mean, it's open to anybody joining, right? So a student can join mm -hmm. and grab a resource and rearrange and add things and take things away as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And some of the some of the collections that we have actually in Guru are created by students. Um, we've worked with some teachers who have assigned collecting or I'm sorry, creating Guru collections as projects for their classes. So mm -hmm. there are definitely students that use um, the create functionality as well. So questions, thoughts, reactions? What do you Gail, I see you talking. I do, but you're not talking. We don't hear you yet. <laughs> it's, in, it's in the upper right hand corner. Got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, since your audience right now is grades um, 5 through 12, um, and students can sign up, do they have to have an email address oh. and be able to sign up? Yes, they do have to have an email address in order to sign up. Um, if they are under 13, they would need to use a parent or guardian's email address in order to sign up. Um, that's just for safety precautions. Mm -hmm. But you can actually you can use Guru without registering for an account. We just suggest that if you're going to use Guru, um, you should create an account because that allows you to save resources and save any collections that you've edited or customized or created. Oh, okay. So t they could use it um, without so without an account. In other words, without an email address. So your kids 13 and under. Could be using it sure. even if they didn't have an actual account. Okay, yeah, and then so um, I was actually, uh -huh. well, I was just going to ask um, if there were another kind of similar program that Guru would be compared to, even mm -hmm. if it's better. Um, what would you What would you say the closest thing to Guru would be? Um. You know, to be honest, I don't think there's another company out there that's doing uh, quite the same thing that we are. I know there is, um, as far as search engines, I feel like, like most people use I'll jump Google in. I, I think they don't get that filter. I think you have um, Power My Learning by uh, Computers, for Educa Computers for Youth, um, based out of New York. I believe they they have a similar tool, um, as well as one from Capella University called Sophia. Um, but I think also both of those, the search capability of both of those is not as as robust, I would say, as Guru and and also the create um, capacity to bring in other free web tools. Um, mm -hmm. As far as my experience using in both of those tools, is it's not as en enriched as Guru is. But uh, both of those, I think, are two similar, two similar ideas. A similar question was bouncing around in my head too, Gail. So, and I think what's behind that question is something like we're, it's people trying to wrap their heads around what does mm -hmm. this thing do, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I think to some degree. Well, I had yeah. a question. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, um, you know, like if I have I have my students doing a research project right now, and um, you know, I held off on things like Digo. You know, as like a group bookmarking place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. so um, you know, I was thinking it's kind of like that. So how for me, I guess my question is, um, what's some difference between like the social bookmarking thing? Mm -hmm. Sure. 
I can talk uh, about um oh sorry I can talk uh, about what we're using it well our, Tim and I have been working to um, uh, use it with my team um, in Oakland and um, right now um, we are we are tasked this year with um, creating units um, from the Common Core and so um, we change pretty dramatically how we do PD in the district and uh, created cohorts this year that school sites apply to and that each cohort, the cohorts include a cadre of teacher leaders and the teacher leaders are the ones who are creating these units to try it at their school. So the idea is to have a place for teachers at the school sites to be able to view collections or units that are exemplary um, units of the Common Core so that they can see what it looks like in an organized fashion as you saw um, demonstrated and then they can pull their own stuff and um, and then Tim and I, um, well Tim did a lot of the work um, we had created this year based on the uh, template from Smarter Balance because um, mm -hmm. that's the consortium based here in California that's creating the assessment for Common Core and uh, so based on that template we created a performance writing task and it's been um, and the the writing task includes lots of activities to lead up to the actual task that the students will do and so um, Tim was able to take what we had which was basically a printed out packet and put it up into Guru and it looks beautiful and um, so our, the idea was to have the teachers would be able to project that to the students and walk through it in that way um, also for training purposes so um, it's a great way to um, in, in a mass way spread the news in a way for teachers to really get in and dig in to see what it looks like and then pull again from you know the resources and then create their own so um, Anyway, we're presenting this on Friday, so but we it, it's been really exciting this week, Tim and I working together and coming up with different ideas on how Guru can make this work. And it, it, it's you know, I'm really excited about that. So let me let me um and and I again I, I do want to get as deep as we can in different use cases here. But um going back to Chris's and, and Gail's question, because it must be on other people's minds too. Like right. what is the urge behind curation? Like, so, you know, Pinterest is real popular, Learnist is interesting, Digo and, and other kinds of social networking. So there must be... Leah, is that you? <laughs> do you no, know I... mute? Oh, somebody. Oh, somebody's... Oh, that's Gail. Gail, do you Someone mind muting? Someone has a dog, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so yes. can, can you put it Why in the... Why did it have to be me? <laughs> I don't. Do you have those children running around? <laughs> it's, yeah, our guru, it's our guru house dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I muted Gail. She can unmute when she's ready. All right. So, can somebody address it from that point of view? Like, is it because you know you? I, Tim, Timothy and I had a yeah. conversation earlier where I, for me, it was the collectionness of the ability to collect work that was more interesting than the search function. Um, and so, anyway, so I get that you, you want to put it out there as a search tool, but I think there's, a lot of us are really interested in curation, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so, and Jody, maybe you can speak to just your, your, your one-off project with a school in the Bay Area here where students uh, didn't have any exposure to Guru before they saw you in there teaching with this tool, and yet they were able to go home. Then their their night's assignment was to curate and and put together a collection. I think just to answer the question about how it's different from Digo and stuff, it is the ability to then build a playlist together of those resources. That what what I'm excited most about is the students then having a digital portfolio, so to speak, that yeah. they can post to their social media pages, that they can um, share with friends and make copy of, which is the most flattering thing as a teacher, if, if someone wants to copy your work and then iterate off that. We all talk about not reinventing the wheel. And this really allows you to do that um, and yet see a window into way teachers are creating and responding to the ways that students are, are learning right now using uh, social media and using, I should say, just multimedia tools to capture their attention. And 
Jody, maybe you want to share just the student response, even put some links to their, their creation uh, as a result of your work. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so first off, the, the program that I did with um, a school in San Francisco called the Town School for Boys uh, was based around ecological classification. Um, that was the content that we used. And it was a week-long pilot that explored that content and then had, through direct observation of specimens, the students then created species accounts um, that then went into a final class field guide. So we, they used Guru Search for um, researching their various species. Yeah. Uh, and that was it, you know, a great tool that worked for that. And then they, as far as their collection creation, which I'll, I'll share the link with you, um, you know, they, they uploaded photo evidence. Like their homework assignment, they had zero experience with Guru. So it was a task to decide what sort of scaffolding they would need to be able to add their own resources. So to take a digital photo, to upload it, and then to, um, you know, upload it onto their desktop, make it into a PDF, and pull it into Guru. Um, but, so it wasn't necessarily speaking to curation ex in specifically, but um, it was really interesting to see uh, just the critical thinking that went into them having to create photo evidence for their rationale for what was, in the homework assignment, a, um, a classification diagram that they had to make to classify objects in their home. So it was interesting in their participation to get to see these various levels of critical thinking that occurred. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll share that link with you right now so that it's not blessed. Can I ask a quick question? Please, yeah. Um, how? Sorry, Paul, <laughs> to cut in on you. Um, Please. What, what, when you talked about the scaffolding, did, so did they pick it up pretty quickly, or what was, or was it kind of across the board? Some of them did, some of them yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. That's a great question, Leah. Um, okay, so I'm chatting um, the, the collection to you all. And if you go through the collection, you'll see uh, the scaffolding was, was, because we've looked at creating, or we've, we've built a lot of creating around teachers specifically, um, it was interesting to sort of think about what materials they would need. Within the collection, you'll see that there is um, some data in regards to how students did. So 93% of, percent of students completed the homework assignment, okay? And so completed in that sense means they created a, a classification diagram and took a picture to show their rationale. Of that 93%, um, they're only just around 30% were able to complete all of the tasks involved. Um, so one third for us is pretty, I mean, that's a pretty good starting point for a shot in the dark uh, with, with seventh graders, you know, with no, with no experience. So that was kind of a cool baseline. What I also thought was interesting, though, thinking about it pedagogically or from like a teaching perspective, was that um, they did a self-evaluation. By and large, they thought that skill-based, what was the most challenging thing for them, was, uh, was tech-related, right? But then what was interesting is that they still gathered that the most significant content was ecology-based and classification-based. Um, so I, I think, you know, it's, it was interesting to see the layers that uh, it engaged their sort of thinking and then, you know, um, even considering their learning process. Um, so that was that specifically. And Paul, I want to speak to this idea of curation, you know. Um, I think, like, I don't know, I feel as an educator, we're in the community, we're still figuring out what to do. I know I'm figuring out what to do with this vast array of resources. and. Um, you know, it's almost like through picking up the stones and looking at them, uh, we find out which ones are, are best. And I think Guru is a shot at sort of putting one lens on that, saying the resource, resources we have here we think are useful. And so look at these stones in particular and see what you can make from them. Um, so I think that that's kind of this bit of like, you know, laying the tools out there to see what people do. That's a great analogy. <laughs> uh, very ecological base as well. <laughs> well they, I, I, I have to just say, you Rocky Mountain people, I, um, I lived in the Rockies for 12 years before moving to Asia and then have just relocated back to the States to the Bay Area. So I'm a little nostalgic for like Salt Lake City and Loveland. <laughs> so somewhere in their um, open educational resources 
is an important part of the picture as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, another perspective to ask about is, does this replace textbooks, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, on some level? And, and is that a good thing or, I mean, you know, to, does that make any sense or, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I think one okay. thing. <laughs> I'm glad I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> well, something, something that, that I think we're not, we're not anywhere near this yet, but ultimately when our, our usership is, is, you know, in the half a million mark or even a million users, if we can leverage the, the community, the kind of the crowdsourcing social signals within Guru that will say, these are the best resources and these are not. And the, the ones that are not are crowdsourced out and they don't come up in search. And the ones that are will kind of rise to the top. And it becomes a, a trusted and vetted source of, of information that educators can know that they can go to and find in a matter of minutes curated high, high quality stuff. I, I don't think we're there yet. I, I think there's great initiative from CK12 um, putting textbooks out there. Um, their content is all within Guru. And um, they're doing also amazing things on, on their site to, to reach students in the ways they're learning today via more multimedia resources. But um, I, I think textbooks are changing. I, I think I've seen some stuff recently around now that students have digital books, you know, are they still reading um, or are they reading more? And the evidence isn't quite there yet. I think people are still reading less and less. And um, I, I would hate to see textbooks or the concept of it go away, but um, we also need to respond to the way kids want to learn too. And yeah. hopefully we can have tools that do that. Well, when I want um, students, so for example, I've been putting together um, a collection around stop and frisk, um, a hot issue um, in, yeah. in lots of places, but certainly in New York City. Um, and um, so when I want to, to put together, here are four reports, here are, here are four court cases. Mm -hmm. um, when I put the PDF together and then, and then put that up, I, like I don't have a category, and I I always choose textbook for that category. Yeah. By the way, you know, uh, which yeah. Paul, I think you you speak to something that's pretty interesting. Your, your question gave me a really nice stutter stop. <laughs> Thinking about textbooks, and I think what's um again with like this fire hydrant of information we're dealing with, um, and how we're helping helping our students to manage that and harness that. What we have access to, thinking about just police reports in general, what we're talking about is um, we have access to primary primary sources, mm -hmm. more so now than ever. So, I mean, mm -hmm. does it replace textbooks? No. But we know that textbooks become, have, have, you know, a lot of good information, but also go through cycles of being obsolete. Mm -hmm. um, and I think by sort of having, having those primary sources, we then like I've seen you do with your work in the collections um, that Tim has shown me, you know, we're allowing students the opportunity to review primary sources, whether they're opinion pieces or, you know, um, straight up events that occur, and having them make some sort of meaning out of that versus getting something third hand and, and making meaning out of that. Mm -hmm. So I do think it is a different sort of opportunity, maybe in a different genre altogether than one to one. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> I, and uh, I'm going to keep, keep talking, but please, if I am going too far off where you guys want to go, let me know. But one one of the one of the um, other things about search or um, uh, or about research for students, and and as much as possible, and I wish I. Where I was able to do it even more, and I hope in the future too, is um, is to have these things become collaborative um, with students and with other teachers, and and certainly the tool makes that easy and possible to do. Um, but something that I've been thinking about is in the research process, um, as much as possible, how to make um, moments in the process. Um, <sighs> have be real and be shareable with other people right so that they become nodes for conversation right so you don't like make a research project you 
you say here are the here are the ten articles that I'm going to be reading this week. Um, do you want to look at them too? And you know, give and I'll tell you what I'm thinking about them. You can tell me what you're thinking about them. So that kind of um, Chris Sloan has been using terms recently, like social. Is it social research or social something to that effect? Yeah, social scholarship. I think so it's, yeah. connected research. Yeah. So, can you well, say a word about what? Yeah, go ahead, Leah. Well, I was we we had this discussion because uh, with um, some 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 stakeholders in our district around um, leveraging our senior project. And we were talking about just this, the, the social aspect of research, and it was pointed out by one of our um, teachers that um, this, this is what professors do all the time. Um, professors never work by themselves right. on any research. They work in collaboration with lots of other professors. And so it was, it was just an interesting aspect that was pointed out to me that, like, duh, you know, of course. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to mention that. I, I'm... I find this really interesting and I'm working the project based so I'm working on um, integrating project based learning into Guru and, and we're really looking at how to do that in a meaningful way and of course mm -hmm. a huge component of that is um, academic collaboration mm -hmm. uh, and so creating a digital space that supports that. Uh, now all of this is like I'm not I'm relatively new to Silicon Valley so it's beyond beta I don't know what <laughs> it's alpha and, and beyond but um, mm -hmm. So it's it's really just ideas at this point. But one of the things I'm really interested in is taking, you know, we we have chat and we have these um, nodes to socialize. But really, like how we can cultivate and scaffold academic space through these instant communications. So, for instance, how can we have a space like Guru have um, that great culture that you feel when you walk into a wonderful school? Mm -hmm. um, and so when you think about this idea of connected research or social scholarship, what needs, what kind of scaffolding needs to occur to have those right. interactions between students be, you know, the type of group work that you would want to support in your classroom that has the same right. sort of, you know, honor code, integrity, and academic yeah. vibe. Um, so I think that's a really, that's a really interesting question. So what Guru allows, I think, by the way, and I thought of the word that I couldn't think of there for a second, is artifacts. Like you can create an artifact right. that you can then share with other people, right? right. So artifacts of your thinking along the way is a yeah. wonderful thing. And Chris is, is wonderful at um, having his students um, reflect and comment on things um, as, as they're going. But mm -hmm. being able to then go and see the actual um, yeah. article that they're reading, um, yeah. And then kind of join in that in, in a deeper way, I think would be really interesting yeah. to do. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then part of it also is like the different segments, and I know you guys might be changing this around a little bit, but that's okay still. But um, collections within collections, whatever they are. <laughs> but but the, the shelves are the segments that, that, that exist now. Um, what's nice about that is to be able to have like, um, so when I, uh, it's a very specific example. Again, um, a student in an economics class that I'm teaching is is uh, researching the economic benefits of the legalization of marijuana. Um, uh, you guys out there in Colorado have have uh, led us in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so um, it was really like if he just when he went on to Google search, right? Um, mm -hmm. It was hard for him to find anything that doubted the economic benefits of legalization of marijuana. Like everything is like all real positive. Mm -hmm. So I was able to find a couple of things that the question, you know, once it's not in the black market anymore, et cetera, et cetera, you know, it, the, the price may go down really low in the taxation. So I was able to find a couple of articles like that. So to be able to put kind of opposing viewpoints on the shelf mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. to what he found was was an important part of the search pro yep. process mm -hmm. in some way. So like just going to Google search wasn't enough. You know, like I was able mm -hmm. to supplement that. Well, that you could put an advanced search um, and then put in opposing. Um, you have to put that in the equation for your search, in the equation yeah. formula, and put opposing. Um, yeah, that, that's how I did. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you did? So, okay. Yeah, that's what I did. He didn't know how to do that yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, they took.
to the advanced search, there used to be a, a link right on the Google search page where right. it said advanced search over on the right, but it's gone. So it's gone now out. you have to actually... It's just under settings there, yeah. Or under that flywheel, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's even there anymore. I have to yeah. Google advanced search. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, under, it's under that little wheel at the top right. It's not that oh, right it is? Part. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well... Um, <laughs> they should check with you, you before they make out. those changes. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to chat you guys. A, I'm going to chat you another link. Um, okay. Speaking just towards uh, artifacts, and this is not artifacts of research necessary, but art necessarily, but artifacts of investigation. This is just the link to the final collection that the students made, which has embedded in it their group work rationale for how they chose how to organize their species accounts, the individual species accounts they made into groups based on the principles of classification that they learned. Mm -hmm. um, so this was an attempt, and, and I'll call it just that, and then hold the, the rest of the community out to do a lot better on it. <laughs> and getting students to really um, to document the rationale and, and push themselves in that way. But it also does then serve as a class artifact. Cool. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, by the way, and Chris, you're you're putting those links over into the Ed Tech Talk chat room. Yes, I, I, I am. You. Okay, as great. We speak. Good. Okay. Uh, Paul, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. When you when you work with your students around search, is there a badge that they can earn for learning like advanced search techniques, um, or how does that work? And this could go for the whole panel, like. Who teaches search, and how do you do it, and is it something formalized at your school site? Or... Yeah, well, and, and in the context of this conversation, um, mm -hmm. if I could shift that question a sure. little bit. One of the, one of the interesting questions is, is about using Guru is, don't I want to teach kids how to search? Why do I want to give it to them, you know? Um, no, yeah, you want to teach them how to search, absolutely. Right, but, but Guru seems like, I mean, maybe it's a misuse of Guru, but it, it, it would be making it too easy for kids. It's like, here are the three articles you have to read. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. I, I, I've thought about that a lot. I kind of yeah. think about it. You start, you know, the adult swim time is at this time, and in the, in the, you start in the kiddie pool, kind of, so to speak, right. um, mm -hmm. which, you know, I think it's just the fact that most students – you know, don't know much about advanced search kind of limits the, the full functionality of Google mm -hmm. to really to be able to explore what you want to find on there. Um, but I think Guru is certainly just one stepping stone towards a, a greater understanding of search. I mm -hmm. think it comes back to, um, you know, in the sense of teachers, you want to be able to find it and find it fast. Uh, but I don't think our search in that, in that sense teaches students, um, you know, what is, what is the ultimate quality you're looking for. I, I think that's that's a goal of what Jody and I would like to do though with Project Base is to to get them to see the vision of why this is a quality resource, why it has been on Guru liked uh, you know, or viewed a handful of times, or why it shows up on that first page on Google, um, and to be able to formulate their own opinion um, mm -hmm. on why they chose that. And I wonder, Chris, if, if are, as you're teaching them to curate and, and um, teaching them that discerning eye, you know, are they coming up with just a range of, of, uh, of search queries that some are great, others not? Or is well, what I um, do is, right now I'm, I, we still do a traditional research paper, but I'm having them blog as they do the research paper. So, you know, every week they put what Chris, they're Chris, learning up. you hold on to that, okay? It's traditional, but go ahead. <laughs> well, okay, I, maybe it's a white paper we're doing, but, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then, um, you know, so every week I'll talk about, you know, let's use the site operator search, for instance, or, uh, you know, and then they'll use the top-level domain search to, you know, find information. Or, uh, you know, like every week there's a different kind of search tip or a different database okay. we dip into. Okay. Uh, so that's kind that's of... Cool. Um, you know how I'm approaching it right now. So on Youth Voices, you'd see my student stuff. Uh, you know, every week they've got. Today we looked at just Google date range search, and oh, uh, here's cool. what I found about my topic just in the last two weeks, and and oh, things like cool. that. Oh, that's nice. cool. Cool. But, yeah, that's great. You know, I, like I that. haven't. When you asked about the curation, that's the part I haven't been um, doing very well. Is like they haven't been collecting that um, in a coherent manner. 
And the other thing was Paul's point about having conversation around the research as it happens. Yeah, I haven't been doing that mm -hmm. well enough either. So those are the two areas that um, yeah. I need to improve myself. Cool. So just quickly, you, your students mm -hmm. could set up a mm -hmm. um, a collection and you know put all of the stuff they find in one source on one shelf and another source on another shelf where they could. But thinking about how to organize that would be an interesting thing to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chris, I have a Some, question just in regards to what you just said. Uh, it just off the off the cuff, you said your challenges or what you're working towards is a you know, conversation around the research process and then um, the qual having a discussion about the quality of the resources. Why do you think, like, what do you think, are there barriers to that? Is it something you just haven't gotten to or is it structurally difficult? Like, um, I think it's a mindset that Paul's helping me kind of overcome. You know, um, there's the difference between, hey, here's what I've got and blogging about that and then actually inviting others into the conversation and saying, right. here's where I am, does anybody else want to join me? That's where I haven't been uh, good articulating to my students to kind of invite people into that academic conversation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we almost we almost need permission, even ourselves. Um, yeah. I'm seeing I'm I'm taking a just an uh, an online course. I'm curious through the University of Illinois and a mobile learning course and. One of the things I thought was interesting about the way the professor is making us share our work is that we each are, are invited to comment on three to four, uh, three or four classmates' work um, each week, and that that as as that result, it won't just go to one teacher who gives that feedback, but we're accountable to each other in the community. And I and I like the idea, and it seems like a natural thing, but I think just having that invitation to do so through class as a forced assignment will kind of help at least me get into the habit of opening up my work for, for feedback for others and to mm -hmm. co-construct the conversation. Not let it just live as a one-off, but you know, continue to be built upon and yeah. iterated upon. Yeah. yeah. Monica, I want to invite you to join us at any point here. Um, your thoughts about, I mean, one of the things when I think about your work and, and what I understand of it um, is, is that this is, um, to my mind, it's another tool to organize the chaos out there in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wondered at some point if you'd like to jump in with a question or thought, feel free, <laughs> as you do, I'm sure. But I just wanted to put you on the spot for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, I what's going through my head, and quite honestly, it's because um, this is so amazing. Um, as is Instagram and Mighty mm -hmm. Bow that might have that conversation piece. So, because it's so incredible, what's going through my head is imagining the potential if we didn't have the curricular demands, um, <laughs> we weren't forcing specific learnings. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and we weren't saying everyone come here. You know, we just, it's just such an incredible time. Mm -hmm. um, we would be having the cures to cancer and everything right now. If, if we could let go of that, you know, like the high school that's not going to test, you know. So that's all I'm thinking. It's the more amazing yeah. things get, the more it's like, what the heck are we doing with our days? You know, why are we studying yeah. this when we could be taking care of life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, but and, and would that what would that look like on Guru? Can we, do you, do you, have you thought? It that? wouldn't. Well, in my mind, it wouldn't yeah. be what it looks like on Guru. It would be what it looks like in a kid's head, and Guru is just one piece of that. It uh -huh. might be the place that they decide to gather because there's stuff there. Um, but to me, the future oh, yeah. is in the person's head, and you use multiple. Um, multiple means for that, guru being one of them. But imagine guru if there weren't curricular directions and kids had this free time just to study whatever. You wouldn't need to have an assignment be shared with other people because it would be the thing they could oh, yeah. not share. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. But, but the thing is, if, if, if the kid who is going off in their direction could tra you know use Guru or another tool like that to trace their thinking? Absolutely. Then, no, then absolutely. others might follow you know 
the, with them. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I'm saying it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. It's just I wish we didn't have the directive that, you know, we're trying to figure out ways to motivate people to use these amazing things. I mean, right. if we would get out of the way, and it's not any, I mean, it's the the directive that we have from government in order to get the funding. It's not like we're, you know, that's all I'm saying. It's amazing, and I, people would be using all this stuff for sure mm. on their mm. own after yeah. hours, which I'm sure a lot of them do mm -hmm. already. But you asked. That's my thought. It's <laughs> <laughs> very helpful. Thank you. Something Others, I, I thought was uh, just just interesting about really seeing w where it can go in the hands of the students. There was a teacher uh, we call one of our power users up in. Uh, Sacramento at Florin High School, um, Heidi H Hagen, who I've um, heard of that school. oh she's I've... she's she's doing amazing <laughs> things, and by by no means would she de declare that she's the most tech savvy, but yet she has the comfortability to be able to let it get into her students' hand and and kind of see where they go with it, um, mm -hmm. and ultimately let them be the the evaluators of each other. Um, she created with them, they co-created and constructed what they call the Goo Rubric. And um, cool. what it is, is, is it's uh, the students given some framework around the collections that they created. Um, there was a whole section around curation, content curation, being thoughtful about how you organize your resources, why you might have introduced with a video versus uh, a, an image, a powerful image or so, and really put the students on point to be able to explain their creation process. And um, and ultimately, they kind of rated each other's collections, and they gave feedback. And um, the teacher used these. This was an agriculture biology class, and she ended up using various chunks of the student collections in her curriculum as she teaches, as she's teaching for the rest of the year. And so the students are really like empowered to co-construct what the learning is in that class. And um, I didn't have the fortunate privilege to visit her class, but our colleagues did, and. I mean, there are students who have the moniker Guru King and um, kind of the, the class helper, and they just they walked around with such pride uh, around their work as a result of uh, mm -hmm. kind of her handing it back to them and saying, "Here's mm -hmm. a tool you guys create, go with it." And it's it's just really powerful. I thought I'd mention it. It's cool. I I know the answer to this, but I'm wondering if you hear teachers say, "Why can't I just do this on PowerPoint?" Like, um, how how is you know how does it blow up PowerPoint in some way? <laughs> is, that, is that a fair question? Or? The transition from PowerPoint seems to come, or the PowerPoint ideas seems to come when um, when teachers get the get the the potential that Guru can be an integrating context. Period. So it's like the PowerPoint or the PowerPoint can be there, and so it's not. You're not kind of mm -hmm. schlepping things together. They're they're there for you, and so it just is sort of like having um, you know, it's like having a tidy classroom in a way. I think that a, a lot of us, when or you know, when I'm teaching and I'm um, in my previous lives when I've integrated technology, it's been really piecemeal, and that's added considerable stress. Mm -hmm. um, versus, you know, I was really put to the fire doing some of my pilots here with, you know as an educator, what to do with, with wait time when a video is loading slowly or something like that. Um, I might have the same sort of wait time because a kid is having an issue or because something's going on with a facility, but because it's tech, I get a different anxiety. But I think once, like, the, with the folks that I've been working with, once they see the ability that it both professionalizes their process and makes it a little bit faster and as a repository for their curriculum, but also the way it professionalizes student work. Mm -hmm. um, that really, I, I think that was really a corner turn for students and teachers that I worked with, in particular with that second collection I showed you. So students handed in their their 12 year old boys and they handed in their assignments and they were like stuffed in school bags and all of this stuff. And then they're in Guru and they are on, in a presentation form. They're just super sleek and um, that made them take themselves a little bit more seriously. So I think that that sort of profession, as as the tools work for them, the professionalization will help with the power getting out of the PowerPoint. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think also yeah. I, I, I just, just want to jump I, in. Oh, go ahead, Dania. Yeah. 
Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, this is actually something that uh, Tim mentioned a little before this, and I think I mentioned this, this to Peggy in the um, chat. But um, one of the models that we really love here at Guru and that we try to follow is the Wikipedia model. And um, I think the great thing about Guru is that because you can upload your slides that you've created in PowerPoint uh, to Guru, you have that opportunity to share your knowledge and your expertise with the rest of the Guru using world, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's that, um, that add component of sharing what you know with the rest of the world as opposed to your knowledge on a PowerPoint just being a standalone PowerPoint and never having any reach, so. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are kind of getting up to the hour, and I want to give people enough time to say things that they were thinking as we're going here. So I have other, lots of other directions we could go. Um, one of the questions, and I'll give you an example, and then you guys jump in and say what you need to say. But um, the open educational resources is still a really interesting question to me because um, you know, the show we even did last week was about um, Bill Fitzgerald thinking about how to help organize um, OER in some way because it's it's all it's there's wonderful tools out there, but they're hard to find and it's hard to get them organized. I mean, is yeah. that one of the missions of Guru? And I guess it's a question because when I make a collection, it's not necessary for me to to use one of those resources. So I'm just wondering how that, if you could address that a little bit. <laughs> did I ask that clearly <laughs> enough? Uh, like, you did. Yeah, I, 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 I think about the work that the learning registry is doing, and um, there's, there's a huge movement towards OER. I, I feel that one of our missions is to you know, I think in its genesis, Guru's mission is to, to honor the right to human education. You know, what, is, what does that mean? It means that a, a student in Palo Alto who has access to great educational resources can study and learn and go on to college, but that a student in Bangalore, India, or in Chennai, or in Bangladesh... East Oakland. <laughs> East Oakland, right? That, yeah. they, that they, using OER, and searching and finding them, and... and uh, going to a place where they can study materials right off the bat at no cost um, mm -hmm. is really what what I think in, in our office brings us together towards this mission and and um, and to, to seeing it fulfilled through the OER is is just an exciting time and space and we're fortunate to be right in the forefront of what I think is going to be a, you know a movement that people eventually move for toward um, mm -hmm. why would they pay you know hundreds of dollars for textbooks when it's all out there. It's right. just, it's like taking a sip from a fire hydrant, though, too, and hopefully we can, we can put a little spigot on it so that it's easier to, to find and to access that, that content. Wow. Did you plan that? That was good. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I, it's, just, it's my uh, passion, Paul. Nice, so. nice summary. Good job. <laughs> no, anyway, Thanks. great. But no, that was very, very helpful, I think. Um, but, but let's go around and see what other people's kind of final thoughts are. And Chris, can we start with you, and then we'll just come across. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, uh, I guess, you know, I'm not completely familiar. I don't know Guru really much at all. Uh, but it sounds like it started as kind of a STEM thing. And, um, but, you know, I look at uh, a lot of what I want my students to do is to find resources to address the, the kind of the civic debate that's going on right now mm -hmm. because there's so much misinformation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of, <clears throat> that's one of the missions, I guess, of mm -hmm. my teaching is how to have them be good citizens via good information. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I'm thinking of ways where they could curate these um, good resources around, um, you know, issues that matter to them. Uh, yeah, so that's where I am right now. Yeah, Chris, the, the kids in Austin, Texas, who are on Youth Voices uh, right, recently mm -hmm. have uh, very different opinions about guns than my kids do, i got to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but also, so anyway, and some of that's coming up, by the way. And your, one of your students responded hilariously. Did you see that? No, I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, there's, there, anyway. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a, sorry, sorry. There's That's a there's a great. there's a kid there's a kid who um who from Austin, Texas, who says he agrees totally with Rush Limbaugh. And one of your one of your students says, "Yeah, that's right. We want to take your guns and kill you with them." And then we'll, <laughs> anyway, so he just answers very cynically back. But, but it, it's a, it was a great answer. Anyway, sorry, uh, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I would just uh, like it on record, um, Tim, that I actually work in the Elk Grove School District right, and drive by Florin High School every day, and I do know <laughs> right. Heidi Hagen, but I did not know um, that I should be stopping by, and so I'm going to take advantage of having a firsthand um, you know, resource to check out Guru. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You won't be disappointed. Cool. That's great to know. <laughs> Gail, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, I'm glad I did. Cool. Jody. Oh, I just want to say, Paul, thanks so much for hosting this space. Um, this is my first Google Hangout, and uh, it's it's wonderful to have this exposure to the ideas that are about, that are bouncing around. And you know, this is an open community. Guru is is an an offering, just like uh, you hosting this space. And I just you know, through through us keeping our ears to the ground and listening to all the great work that's going on there, and people who are making the great work continuing to share it, we will make, uh, you know, the power. We will kind of amplify what we can do with Guru. So, and you know, uh, one of the things Timothy and I talked mm -hmm. about is um, maybe at a later show inviting some of the tech people on for us to ask them sort of direct questions about, you know, how come that works but this doesn't, that, that kind of stuff. So, or we, we would love for this to be here. <laughs> and, yeah. or, or whatever questions you guys have, too. But, yeah. So, future, we hope. Leah. Um, well, this, this is my first Google Hangout, too. This has been great. Um, I've, um, I've learned a lot just hearing everybody's input. Um, especially some of my shortcomings in that um, was when Tim and I were working together, I was really reluctant to think, you know, to hand it off to the students right away and have them start creating because I was thinking first the teachers got to get a hold of it and I'm thinking that's wrong thinking maybe, you know, just mm -hmm. bypass the teachers all together and give it to the students. So, um, but I also want to, um, <clears throat> it also, another point was um, really uh, thinking about <clears throat> as a, Civic, engage, uh, civic education that this research is so important to teach kids because of all the mis misinformation out there. Um, and um, so really want to talk you know, more in the future about what other people are doing and sharing that, that part too. So it's very nice meeting everybody. Thank you. Thank you for kicking it off. <laughs> well, <laughs> Monica, do you have any thoughts? Just thanks for all your work and um, great resource that you're offering to people. Yeah, isn't it great that the, all these people are working for teachers this way? I think it's great. <laughs> I, I like your analogy too, Timothy, of the, the um, fire hydrant. Yeah, okay. that was good. Fire hydrant, because <laughs> it is all too big to know. Thank you. And Xenia, you have any final thoughts? Looks like you have a colleague there, is that right? Hi. She magically appeared. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I just want to, first of all, thank you, Paul, for inviting us um, to do this webcast. It was great getting to um, talk with all of these people. And I just want to put my outreach hat on to wrap up my final thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone uh, watching this webcast, either live or the recorded webcast, would like to know more about Guru or learn about uh, bringing it into their schools um, or what kind of functionalities we currently have, Definitely send us an email. We love talking to teachers, school districts, partners, anyone. Um, our well, my personal email here is Xenia X E N I A at GuruLearning.org, um, or you can email Jody at GuruLearning.org or Tim at GuruLearning.org, and we'll be more than happy to speak with you. So, and you, you um, sort of uh, moderate or make happen a LinkedIn group as well. Where you have some conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, you so can we find do them. have a LinkedIn community called Teaching with Guru. So definitely um, hop in there and join the discussion if you are on LinkedIn. 
Great. Um, thank you all for this discussion. Um, we always thank here at the end um, edtechtalk.com and worldbridges.net, uh, Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo. And um, you can find this on YouTube um, and at teachersteachingteachers.org and at edtechtalk.com. And um, we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Good night. All right. Good night. Thanks so much, Paul. Take care. Bye, Bye, Paul. Everyone. Bye.